Pursuit TV. On this episode, we've got Terry Gross. He's going to go after some whitetail. Yeah. Um, I had a real, real great season this year. Uh, we could start out in um, October. I hunted a piece of property in uh, northern Kent County that I had applied for a draw. Um, was chosen. 15, 15 people to hunt 400 acres roughly. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, I liked it. It was a really good deal. Um, didn't have any hunting pressure there. Had a trail camera out all season. Only had one person on that trail camera. So I don't think they hunt it real heavily like most other properties, especially public. Um, first time hunting out of the saddle. Um, actually first time shooting a deer out of the saddle. Now you got a doe out of the saddle, right? Yes, yes. I, I shot one uh, mid-October and uh, just to see how the saddle worked and everything was really nice. Uh, there was four deer came in early, early that morning when it was just barely light and uh, footage was real dark so we won't show that or anything, but uh, a couple hours later, I had a doe come in there, and I was fortunate enough to get a shot on her. Well, let's take a look and see what happened on that doe hunt.
first time shooting a deer out of the actual saddle. Yes. Okay. Yes, I've hunted out of it numerous times throughout the year and a few times last year. Now, um, does that make it more difficult trying to maneuver around a tree or is that easier? Uh, some aspects are easier, some are a little more difficult, mm -hmm. especially if uh, you have a deer get in close before you realize it's there and then you have to maneuver around the tree. Gotcha. So do you find that your chances or odds of being busted per se go up or do you think that a lot of times it, you have the advantage kind of seeing more around the tree to where you can kind of get in position? Yeah, you have advantage of, you know, especially if you see them early, you can get around the tree, use the tree as a blocker almost. Awesome. And as they come by on your, on your strong side, get a shot. Now if they come in and they actually come on the other side, on your weak side, then you do a little bit more movement than if you were hunting in a regular hang-on stand to where you just, you know, simply just two steps and you're turned right around. Mm -hmm. well, now it's my understanding you shot a pretty nice buck this year too, um, and that wasn't out of a saddle, that was out of a, a regular ladder stand? Yes. Okay, now yes. what was that like? I mean, the, the, the hunt, well, well, what's going on with that? The reason I didn't hunt out of the saddle there was uh, I've hunted this place for 20 years and I had a, a ladder stand hanging in there for years, shot numerous nice deer out of there. Um, so, you know, it's just easy to go right in there, climb up, you're done, you're not setting any sticks up or anything like that. So that's why I didn't hunt out of the saddle this time. But um, he's a uh, one, low 130s class, nine point. Um, 20 inch inside spread. Nice. Had numerous trail cam pictures of him in August and September. And I believe we have a couple of those trail cam pictures. Yes. So we'll, yes. we'll throw a couple of them up on the screen so you guys can see, yes. see what buck we're talking about. Now, when he came in, he kind of caught you off guard by the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah, so I, got, I got caught up in the moment watching a couple squirrels chase each other up and down a tree. And in my head, I was thinking I should probably shoot one of those squirrels because it's so loud right now <laughs> with them running through leaves yeah. up and down the trees. And so I was, I was watching them, you know, enjoying watching them. And uh, I heard something, and when I looked over my, my left shoulder, he was at 13 yards. Oh wow! And he was like looking past me. Um, just before this, I had had a smaller buck come in. And I grunted at the smaller buck, probably 10 minutes before this. I grunted at that smaller buck, and he worked his way all the way around me. I think he was looking for the, the doe that was in there. And uh, I don't know, maybe this, this buck here was out in the corn and heard that grunt and came in to investigate also, because when he got to that certain point, he just stopped and was looking around. And it was on my left side, and I was <clears throat> up against the tree with my left shoulder. The big camera was on the left side of that tree, so I would have had to like really expose myself to get the big camera. And um, I just used the tactic cam that was on the front of my bow. So the sh the footage was real short, like I don't know what is it, seven, ten seconds long, I think. But uh, at that point, I knew I just had to get a good shot on this deer and not so much worry about the footage. For sure, and sometimes, okay. especially in, in, in worrying about trying to get film and trying to put an ethical shot on, obviously we always take the ethical side first, yes. um, so that's the most important. But looks like you put a pretty good shot on him. Yep. Uh, how far did he go after you um, shot pretty far? Or? Essentially, it was a single lung, and I uh, he went roughly about 200 yards. Okay. Um, I hit him, he was quartering away, as you'll see, quarter and way, when I shot, you know, took out that one lung stuck in his opposite shoulder. So it wasn't a pass through or nothing. And uh, the blood was kind of sparse because it had to fill up quite a bit before it started to uh, spill out. But, uh, you know, it's essentially it, the shot you want to shoot the other opposite shoulder. So, yeah. Well, let's play that footage and uh, take a look at that uh, buck kill. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Here we are. Going back. 
back to track the deer I shot this morning. Um, got, got some help. My dad and Lori. To the right. Go around the... This way, I was going to make a circle. <laughs> This one snuck in on me. I couldn't get him on the camp, the big camera. Very little bit of footage with the tech cam. He went a little further than I thought he was gonna. But really nice yeah, that's deer. A water hole right there. <laughs> yeah, I was just kind of going to kind of make a circle. <laughs> Thanks guys for helping. This is a pretty tough track. How many have points, a, Dad? Count them. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with possible nine. Can you get back out of I shot this deer November 6th. Um, he snuck in behind me. I couldn't get the big camera on him. Uh, very little footage with the tact cam. Uh, the Reckoning 35 did its job shooting the gold tip. Uh, XT Hunters, Sever Broadheads. Um, Another great product would be the Buck Stop Lure Company. Uh, using 200 proof, it masked my scent enough where he didn't get real skittish. Uh, this deer is the widest deer I've ever shot. Uh, not sure about what he's going to score up. He's a nine point. He's got this one right here. Should score as a legal point. Thank you to Buck Stop Lure Company for making a great product. I'll be using it for years, years to come. Thank you guys for watching. Well, that was a nice buck kill, Terry, and uh, I, I can't wait to see more footage in the woods. Uh, you're, it seems like you're always out there, and the bucks are just drawn, yeah. drawn to you. So yeah, you're definitely hunting some good area. And uh, I, I just can't wait to see what the next episode is going to be. Um, I know you, you guys went out. Where'd you go? Uh, South Dakota. South Dakota. Yeah. So we have some South Dakota footage coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure to subscribe and like and follow us for more. And we're gonna, we'll work on uh, getting that next episode put together for you guys. Stay tuned. Red Light Pursuit TV.